All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Ships of Marior, Marior, Marier, I don't know, The Ships of Marior by Janny Wirtz. And I probably mispronounced everything about all of that. But um, this is a book that came out in 1994. Uh, book number two in the Wars of Light and Shadow. As you can see, I've got the other books here. There's a uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books in the series. And it's a big series. Each book is pretty thick. Like, I mean, these are like 800 to 1,000 pages each. And... Um, you know, if you want to see my review of The Mist Wraith, which is book number one, um, yeah, Curse of the Mist Wraith, uh, just type in Jan Janny Wirtz and my name into the YouTube search and it will uh, magically appear upon your television screen. But anyway, we're doing number two, book number two. Uh, let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. Now, Janny Wirtz uh, did her own... Um, covers. She's an artist, a very good artist, by the way. So each one of the covers was was done and designed by her and everything. So it's pretty cool. Um, and so let's get into the book itself. Um, man, the, you've got to, uh, I mean, oh, the, and the maps are detailed and elaborate. Um, there's a character list. There's like glossaries at the back of each book with all the characters. There's even um, little... Uh, Little illustrations throughout like that, just on different pages. It's just really cool. Um, now, the, the the versions I have are um, the uh, British versions. These are the versions that they sell in Great Britain. Um, so, I, I, you know, they're hard to get. That's just all I have to say. If you want a matching set, this is the way to go. But they're hard to find. Um, so... Eh, you know, here this is what it is about. There's two brothers, half brothers, um, Lysir and Dakar. Not Dakar. Dakar is the mad prophet. Lysir and Arathon. They're two half brothers. They um uh, came across in book in the first book. They came across the um sort of this star gate, um, but it's like a way gate. It's kind of like the gates in a. It's just a. It's a magic transfer portal into the land of Athera, uh, and they defeated the Mistwraith. That's why book number one is The Curse of the Mistwraith. Well, they, they um, you know, got rid of that in the first book uh, and dispersed all the mists and fog that smothered Athera. They got rid of it. That was, that was the thing. They had to do it. But the Mistwraith also sort of was a magical entity in of itself, and it set the two brothers, the two half-brothers at odds, um, under a very powerful curse of vengeance. And so now we're into book number two, and we've got Lysir, who is, he's the, he's a kind of a wield, the wielder of light. He is made out to be the sort of the good guy in the, in the book, although, although he sh shows questionable traits, just like his brother is made out to be the bad guy, but shows good traits. Anyway, Lysir is made out to be the good guy because he's the wielder of the power of light. Um, he's fair, he's blonde, he's charismatic, he's tall, he's good looking. Um, he, um, he raises a kingdom and an army out of the ashes of this mistwraith that he's freed the world from. And so he's just kind of like got things going for him. And, um, but the two brothers hate each other. You know, Arathon is a mage. He's a little darker, shorter. He's, uh... He's got a passion for music. He plays music. That's why there's always little musical themes on all the covers. Uh, he's uh, he he doesn't want to go. He doesn't want to be a fighter or have war. He's kind of a hippie. He's just kind of a hippie. Um, he's uh, but he's on the run. He's on the run, and he seeks uh, to destroy his brother. I mean, so it's you've got the one brother who's the wielder of light magic. Lysir, the brother Arathon, who's sort of a, I guess for lack of a better word, the wielder of the dark magic. And um, they're at odds. One of them's on the run, one of them's chasing, and it just kind of goes back and forth between those characters 
Also, we get to see a lot of the world through a character named Dakar, the Mad Prophet. He is assigned to one of the brothers as sort of a protector, and I won't say much more than that. And uh, so they go through this landscape. It is a vast landscape. This book and the way that it's written, the way that Janny Roots writes, is um, very similar to the Malazan Book of the Fallen. In other words, you've really got to be concentrating because the prose is thick, the prose is heavy. The prose is creative. Um, uh, it's very uh, flowery and elaborate in some parts. And I enjoy that kind of thing. It adds so much flavor uh, uh, to the story. It adds so much atmosphere. It builds. The world building is impeccable, just like it is with the Malazan Book of the Fallen or Game of Thrones or Wheel of Time. I mean, these books are huge. And you really get to know, like with Robin Hobbs writing, the intricacies of each of these characters, and they're, and they're great. And there's more characters that are in these books than just the three that I mentioned. There's also an island called Meth Island. And if you've made it this far into the video, let me know that you got to the part where I start talking about Meth Island. I was, I was reading it, and I was like, wait. And then I was reading about the island itself, and I'm kind of like, okay, is this coincidence that... Everything about this island is sort of like you know, trailer parky, trashy, and uh, people. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But it's called Meth Island. It literally spelled M E T H Island. I don't know why that, but every time they would mention it, I, my eyes would light up in glee a little bit. I don't know why. It just did. Um, anyway, uh, and then I started looking on the map. I was like, where the f is Meth Island? I, I was like, where is. I became obsessed with Meth Island. I became like addicted to trying to to figure out. And the and I was just like every time, every time I was I was reading, I was like voracious. Oh, when is when are they gonna go back to Meth Island? I'm like, they need to go back to Meth Island. Oh shit, man, it's a hell of a drug. What did uh, what did uh, what did the uh, <laughs> did Rick James say? It's a hell of a drug. Anyway, uh, I just that was such a sidebar. Anyway. I enjoyed the um, second book in Janny Wirtz's Wars of Light and Shadow ever bit as much as the first book, which I gave a banger review on. Um, and uh, so this is the same. I mean, this is like a seriously a close to a 10 out of 10 for me. This is just a great series, a great series. If you really spend time with it, you'll be well rewarded. Well, at least I am for the first two books.